Mary, a box of chocolates. Is it professional for a judge to say, here, a box of chocolates? I never get chocolates. Ed Trissel, do you ever get chocolates? Chocolates? Good heavens, no. All the same. I lost the case. Comes over any time. Just wait to be invited. Who does? It's great. Who's she? Probation officer. Oh. Any time, day or night. Cheat, really. Yeah. I said, Constable Harrison. He said, who's Constable Harrison? I said, just the most beautiful constable in the police force. You said that? Yes, I did, Constable Harrison. I did say that. Would Mr. Haverbrook please go to the Get keeper's the office now. as soon as possible? Well, I'll give it to the policeman. He's a good boy. Really, he is a good yes, boy. I'm he sorry. do nothing like that. He's always been a good boy to me. I mean, you ain't got on my property. Will you impress that on his worship? I don't know who brought it in there. I want that impressed particular. Mr. Morgan Hall to see Mr. Fowle, uh, Warner. Trying to escape, I pray. Epping Forest. What was that you said? I think I can see Epping Forest. Well, I've no doubt you can, my dear fellow. Why should you want to <coughs> see Epping Forest? Hmm. It, it's the home stretch. Is it? I thought I could get a glimpse of the green between the chimneys and that shed. Look, get down. Get down. It's not wise to be up here forever trying to look out. Now, come on. Yes. There's a mean sleeping wind around. Quite treacherous. Treacherous? Yes, yes. You'll never know what a nasty sleeping wind can do. I don't want anything of that sort to catch you before... Uh, before what? Now, you just sit there, quietly, relaxed in the warm, and I shall introduce myself. I am Morgan Hall. Morgan Hall? Yes, Morgan Hall, the barrister. Oh, I'm sorry. Why? Barrister, that's very bad. Oh, well, do you know why, why is that so bad, eh? Oh, when a gentleman of your stamp goes wrong, it's, uh, well, it's a long fall. Why do you say that? It's different for an individual like me. I, I only kept a small seed shop. Yes, yes, I see. Uh, Mr. Fowl, we are going to remain very calm. We are going to remain very lucid. And we are going to arrive at some very uh, important... Bird, bird seed, of course. I'm sorry, what was that you said? Bird seed. Ah, yes. uh, individuals down our way kept uh, birds, mostly. Uh, budgies and canaries. The budgies talked. Lots of lonely people down our way. They kept them for the talk. Mr. Fowle, I am a barrister. Oh, the tragic. I'm here to help you. Well, we, we'll help each other. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, dear Fowle. Oh, dear, oh, dear. I can see, Fowle. I can quite see how you become bewildered. You think that I am in trouble as well. Then I have some very good news for you. I'm free. I can leave here whenever I like. Can you? Of course I can. Yes, whenever I like. The police. The police are my friends. Family all well. I never married. Uh, rent paid up? Oh. <laughs> a week or two owing, perhaps. <laughs> um, a temporary lull in the business, nothing at all. Uh, <laughs> this case will soon put an end to all that. Which case? Uh, your case. My case? Your case, Mr. Farrell. Oh, 
Oh, that's not important. What? I beg your pardon. Well, the flavor's gone out of it. But we're only just at the beginning. Yeah, I can't believe it's me concerned. Mr. Fowl. Mr. Fowl. It is your concern. Never, ever let yourself forget that. You see, that is why you are in here. <laughs> I just can't seem to bother with it. You seem, if I may say so, Mr. Fowle, to have adopted an unpleasantly selfish attitude. Selfish? Dog in the manger. Dog in the manger? Yes, unenthusiastic. What do you mean, unenthusiastic? Fowle, I'm... I'm sorry, Fowle. I didn't mean that, I'm sorry. But there's so much of this about nowadays, so much of this ready-made entertainment. All these free billiards, national health, television. Well, not the... Well, there's not the spirit of fraud that there used to be. You, you feel that? Fowle? Whatever I've done, I've always been mustard keen on my work. I never lost the vision, Val. In all my disappointments, I've never ever lost the love of the job. The position in life to which you've obtained to. Precisely. Yeah. Years of study I've had to obtain. Years of study. Didn't all suddenly drop into my lap. No. No. I've, uh, I've never studied. Years of study. Years of study. I fed mainly on herrings and strong tea. some Latin. Well, only if it's not too much trouble. Not in the least, listen. Actus non sit rias, nisi men sit ria. Filius nullius in flagranti delicto. Understand it. Res judicata peter familias, nullis crimen sine lege. No good. I'm no scholar. Well, he had to be. I mean, I had to be. Well, of course, we all had to be in my day. Then we'd sit for the examinations. The long, dreaded finals. Oh, we were a tense, eager crowd, Mr. Fowle. <laughs> Rugger blues feigned illness. Rowing men fainted. Those who survived tackled the questions. <laughs> very, uh, very searching, were they? Yes, yeah, searching, searching questions. Yes. Define rape. Oh. Describe murder. <laughs> Give your views on adultery. Half a page, please, on indecent assault. Write on one side of the paper only. Never answer two questions at once. No. It stumped you, I dare say. Well, stumped a good many. Yes. yes. And no cheating, Fowl. No. no. No trying to get a glimpse at the other fellow's celluloid cuff. Or creeping out for a look at a book in the student's loo. No. But uh, when it was over, went on vacation. It was a beautiful, long summer. Mm. Pleasant for you. A desperate round of tennis parties. We all tried to snatch at pleasure that summer, if I remember rightly. But we were anxiously waiting.
at last the results. The results of the examinations. W what's it say? I pass. Oh, well done, well done. Third class. Ah. Well, still, you'd, you'd scraped home. That's what I thought. That's what I thought, Mr. Fowle, when they painted my name up on my London chambers. It was my own room. Soon it would be filled with clients. Criminals, financiers, mysterious ladies in distress. <laughs> So I wrote to the only woman in my life to tell her, perhaps in five years' time, when I'd built up my practice, I might make a certain proposal. Meanwhile, I could afford to kill a little time with the crossword. some pretty big cases now, hmm? Dance of large fruit, two words, three and five. You're not still at it. I'm still waiting for a brief. But you, you must be better at the crosswords now. <laughs> not very much. As the years pass, there come to be clues you can no longer understand. Uh -huh. So all that training... Wasted. The talents rust. Uh -huh. And the lady? Went down with her ship. Tragic. Yes, it was. <laughs> Tragic, my wife was never called up. Fowl, you mustn't talk like that to a poor lady wife. Oh, don't let's carry on about me. But we must carry on about you. That's what I'm here for. You're here to... I am here to defend you. Hmm. Can't be done. Why ever not? I know who killed her. Oh. Me. Mm. Really, Mr. Fowl? I have all the respect in the world for your opinions. But we must face this. You're a man of very little education. That's true. I mean, one is only to glance at you to see that you are a person of, well, very limited intelligence. Agreed. Agreed, agreed. Agreed, quite frankly. You think you killed your wife? Mm, seems so to me. Mr. Fowle, look at yourself objectively. Now, on questions of birdseed, I have no doubt at all that you may be infallible. But on a vital point like this, might you not be mistaken? Don't answer that. Before you drop the bomb of a reply, consider who will be wounded. Are the innocents to suffer? Well, I only want to be honest. But you're a criminal, Mr. Fowle. You've broken through the narrow fabric of honesty. You are free to be kind, to be human, and to do good. Yes, but uh, what I did to her was... Mr. Fowle, she's passed out of your life. You've set up new relationships. You've picked out me. Picked out? Yes, selected. I didn't know. No, of course not. That's the whole beauty of the thing. You didn't know me. You came to me under a system of chance, invented like the football pools, to even out the harsh inequalities of the world. You see, you, dear Val, are my first doc brief. Your doc, doc brief. Yes. Doc. Could, could, could you perhaps uh, brief? Explain the doc brief. Yes, of course I can, yes. Now then, criminals who have no money, no friends, mm -hmm. luckily you're one of them, are entitled to choose any barrister sitting in the courts to defend them. Mm -hmm. the barrister gets a brief and is uh, remunerated on a modest scale. Busy lawyers, wealthy lawyers, lawyers with nice, well-paid cases coming on. Leave the court at the double when a doc brief is about to be given away. We regulars who are not busy sit on. Huh. I've been a regular for years. We sit and we hope. We hope one day to be chosen. 
It's not etiquette, you see, Fowl, however badly you want the work, to wave at the prisoner or whistle or try to catch his eye by hoisting some sort of little flag. Uh, yeah. I didn't know. Yes, yes. But what you can do is choose the most advantageous seat, <laughs> the seat any criminal would naturally point at. It's the seat under the window. And for 10 years, my old friend, Tuppy Morgan, bagged it each day at 10. <laughs> Almost once a year, a criminal pointed him out. Oh, Mr. Fowl, Tuppy was a limpet on that seat. <laughs> was he? Yes, yes. But this morning, something, possibly a cold, perhaps death, kept him indoors. <laughs> so I had his place. And you spotted me, no doubt. My glasses polished, my profile drawn and learned in front of the great window. I never noticed. I never noticed. But uh, when they asked you to choose a lawyer... Uh... Well, I... I just shut my eyes and pointed. So even you, Mr. Fowl, didn't choose me. Not altogether. Mm. Law's a haphazard business, isn't it? Yes, it, um, it does seem a bit uh, chancy. Of course, Mr. Fowl, you are very fortunate. Oh, yes, yes. I must confess you hurt me temporarily. <laughs> Might have been kinder to have Kept me in ignorance. <laughs> anyway, what is done is done. Mm. And Fowl... Yes, sir? Try to remember that you're dealing with a fellow man. And, uh, and all the hopes that I've pinned on you. Well, yes, I will. Of course I will. Good. Well, now, come along. Let's get down to business. Yes. Get our minds in order. Yes. Sort things out. Hmm. Oh. Now then. Now, there's this, uh... This wife of yours, um, Doris. 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 Uh, a bitter, unsympathetic woman. No, 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 no. She was always cheerful. She loved a joke. Oh, if I were you, I should be very careful about that for her. But I will. But I mean, if you'd known Doris, she laughed all day and all night. And what sort of, uh, what sort of jokes did this Doris appreciate? Well, all sorts. Pictures in the paper, jokes on the wireless, laughs in crackers. She kept them from Christmas to Christmas and trotted them out in August. Yes. <laughs> Radio. Jokes. If we'd ever had the telly. Mm. <laughs> Dear old me. Yes. No, Teddy. No. You couldn't share them, Val. Well, not to the, uh, not to the same extent. I, um, I didn't always see the funny point. Yes. Mm. Yes. No point. And then, of course, you'd quarrel violently. Oh no, no, no. Uh, no.
looks a miserable it might never happen. <laughs> she said that every night when I came home. <laughs> Where'd you get that miserable face from? <laughs> Yes. Yes, I can see that there is a certain Sunday evening appearance to you. Where's the funeral? Hey, I say, my dog's got no nose. How does he smell? Disgusting. <laughs> Here, hey, can you tell me what it is? It's got 22 legs, two wings, and it's yellow all over. I don't know. A Chinese football team. You see, I... I couldn't always laugh. She'd be doubled up across the table, gasping as if her lungs was full of water. And in fact, I've shown so many wild bits of up in the cereal for the Sunday papers. Dig this, Benny Britt and the corn spreaders with wild oats. <laughs> oh, no, no, damn you. What are you going to be special for? <laughs> 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 she go under bubbling like a drowning woman? Made meals difficult. Indigestible. <laughs> I, I, I would have laughed, but uh, the jokes never tickled me. Tickled her, didn't they? Well, anything did. Yeah. Anything a little comic. Our names were misfortunate. Your names? Yes, she remarked on that. On our wedding day. Oh, uh, over here, please, would you? Uh, thank you very much. Uh, around here, uh, around by the tree. Thank you so much, madam. And uh, you over there, sir. Uh, group yourselves around the happy couple, yes. You, sir, on the end, sir. Very nice. Uh, you, sir, with the young people behind, yes. And uh, the children in front, yes. Come along, children, hurry up. Thank you very much. Along there in front, that's fine. Uh, oh, madam, please! Uh, Mother! Madam, uh, the uh, reception is later. Would you come along and have your photograph taken, please? Thank you very much. Yes. Put yourself next to your uh, husband there on the end. Thank you. That's lovely. Now then, everybody smile. <laughs> All right, Mrs. Fowl. Now we have cock and hen, aren't we, old bird? <laughs> cock and hen? <laughs> she laughed so hard, we, we couldn't get her straightened up for the photograph. Fond of puns, I gather you're trying to say. Well, any sort of joke. Mm. I had a little... Uh, aviary out the back and as she got funnier i spent more time with my birds budgies are a little um, like, like little parrots they have uh, circles around their eyes gives them a sort of sad tired look mm. i i found them very uh, restful and sympathetic uh, until one of them spoke out at me. What did it say? Don't look so miserable. It might never happen. <laughs> she taught it during the day while I was out at work. It, it didn't mean to irritate. It was wrong of her, Fowl, to lead on your bird like that. Yes. Yes. It wasn't him that uh, brought me to it. It was Bateson, the lodger. Another man? Mm. At long last. Evening. Good evening. This is the Fowl House? <laughs> it is Mrs. Fowl? Yes, that's right. Come in. The Fowl House. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, let me introduce myself. Uh -huh. I'm Frank Bateson. I need a room. It just so happens I saw the ad Mr. Fowl put up down the sweet shop. You know, humorous type of lodger required. That's what he said. Yeah. <laughs> that appealed to me because I like a joke. 
You do? Mm. I'm ex police, and if I say so myself, they call me the scream of the station. <laughs> <laughs> and if you can make a copper laugh, well. <laughs> Wasn't that a risk? Well, slight, perhaps, but he went all right. I mean, look what happened. laughing together. Madness. Madness. He knew more jokes than she did. Trying to steal her away before your eyes. That's what I thought. Yes. Yes, I can see it all now. A crime of passion. Unfaithful wife. Cream passionnel. In flagrante. Of course, you wouldn't know what that means. Anyway, if I don't worry, I shall have it reduced to manslaughter in a jiffy. Wronged husband, and there's never a dry eye in the jury box. Continue. <laughs> so friendly. Yes, I, I thought I wouldn't have long to wait. I spent more and more time with my birds. I used to come home late and uh, always be careful to scrunch the gravel at the front door so they could... Uh... <laughs> I went to bed early and uh, left them with the light program. <laughs> So 
Monday mornings, I suggested she took him breakfast in bed. You trusted them and they deceived you. Oh, well, they deceived me, all right. Have your conclusive evidence? Well, they deceived me and I trusted them to do the right thing. Especially after I'd seen what I'd seen in there, in the bedroom. Fowl, must we? I mean... Well, the evidence. Yes, I know, but... Well, I suppose if we must, we must, yes. Mm -hmm. Don't tell us you're a virgin. <laughs> <laughs> well, come on, what's it say? Ah, laughter leads to love. The weekend offers much scope to your cheerful disposition. Mm -hmm. A touch of romance is in store on Sunday morning. <laughs> I'm not sure that I'm getting the drift of your evidence. Well, when he'd first put his knee under her, I thought he'd do the decent thing. I thought I, I'd have peace in my little home at last. The wireless set will be dead silent. The end of all that happy laughter. No sound but the twitter of the budgies and the squeak of my own shoes on the linoleum. Mr. Fowl, you wanted them to. Well, you must admit, <laughs> my hopes were raised pretty high. Then, one evening, I came home. Great son! I couldn't have that. I may like my laugh, but thank God I'm still respectable. Oh, no, thank you. For safety in marriage. I did wrong. You could have left. Mm. Who'd have fed the birds? That thought was uppermost. 
So it's not a crime of passion? No. No, if you put it like that, no. Foul? I've worked and I've waited for you. Now you're the only case I've got. And the most difficult. I'm sorry. I mean, a man could crack his head up against a case like you and still be far from a solution. Can't you see how twelve honest hearts will snap like steel when they learn that you ended up your wife because she wouldn't leave you? If she had left, there wouldn't have been the need. No, no, there's no doubt about it, there's no doubt about it. As I look at you now, I can see that you're an unsympathetic figure. Mm. Mm. Yes, well, there it is. Yes, yes. I shall need a brilliant stroke to save you. Brilliant stroke. Unexpected move. Something pulled out of a hat. How? Huh. Huh. I have it. I have it. Quite brilliant. The surprise witness. Witness? Yes. The surprise witness. Picture the scene, Mr. Fry. The courtroom is silent. The jury about to sink the accused. The prosecution flushed with victory. But wait, now it's my turn. Pleases. What, what, what do you want? No, for heaven's sake, Father. Don't expect me to do this entirely off the cuff without some sort of rehearsal. Uh, no, come along then, come along. Come, come along, Father. Come. Yeah. Come. No, wait there. Wait there, just one moment. Yes. Now I put this towel over your head to simulate the dirty grey wig. There. Already you appear anonymous and vaguely alarming. Now, Fowl, Fowl, I want you to forget your own personality. You are the judge. Yes, you are Sir Tommy Banter, a small, alarmed man. A man who served with distinction in the Great War Hello. at sentencing soldiers to long terms of imprisonment, in love with capital punishment, corporal punishment, punishment. A man without friends, unexpectedly adored by a great niece three years old. Oh, I am. You are him. My lord, I ask your lordship's leave to call the surprise witness. Certainly. What? Certainly. For heaven's sake, Fowl. This is like practicing bullfights with a kitten. Here is an irregular application by the defense. Something that might twist the trial in the prisoner's favor and prevent you catching your connection at Charing Cross. Your breakfast is like a lead weight on your stomach. The dog bit your ankle on the way downstairs. Now then, blind yourself with rage and terrible justice. Now you may not call a surprise witness. That's better. Now, my lord, if your lordship would listen to me. Certainly not. You've had your chance. Let's get on with it. My lord, justice must not only be done, but must clearly be seen to be done. No one knows as yet what my surprise witness will say. Perhaps he will say that the prisoner there is as guilty in his black heart as your lordship thinks. But perhaps, gentlemen of the jury, perhaps we may have trapped an innocent. If so, shall we deny him the one door through which he might walk to freedom? 
<laughs> Public outcry would never die down. Here, here. Here, here. What was that? The public outcry. Ah, yes. Excellent. But uh, don't forget that you're the judge. Silence! I'll have all those noisy people put out. Very well. You may call your witness. But keep it short. Call the surprise witness. I swear to tell the truth, the whole truth. What is your name? Herbert Fowl. The surprise witness. Oh, you, you mean I'd need a different name? Yes, precisely. Mm. Yes, well, we're stuck there, aren't we? Oh, but surely you can think of something. Come along now, come along. Martin Jones. Oh, very good. Yes, very good. Martin Jones, yes. Now, Mr. Martin Jones, I believe that you knew Mr. Fowle. All my life? Yes. Always found him uh, to be respectable. Uh, a quietly spoken man and uh, clean living. Yes. Mr. Jones, Mr. Martin Jones, where was Mr. Fowl when the crime took place? Uh, he was... Um... Uh, uh, my lord, um, would your lordship sharpen his pencil and take this down? You dare say that to him? Fearlessness, Mr. Fowl, the first central in an advocate. Is uh, your lordship's pencil poised? Yes, yes. Get on with it. Where was the accused? In your home, perhaps? In my home. All the evening? Plain whist. I went to collect him and uh, we left Mrs. Fowle happy and well. Uh, further to which, when I returned with him, Mrs. Fowle had been removed to the County and General Hospital. My Lord, I demand the prisoner be released. Certainly. Can't think what all the fuss was about. Release the prisoner and reduce all police officers in court to the rank of PC. <laughs> <laughs> no! No! <laughs> oh dear, oh dear. Well, Fowl. Yes, sir. Aren't you going to thank me? Well, I. Words don't come easily to you, do they? No, very hard. Anyway, anyway. I think we've pulled your chestnut out of the fire. All we have to do now is to make sure of this fellow Jones. Uh, yes, but, um, I, uh, I, I Fowler, don't Fowler, quite understand. Fowler, a very good fellow, but don't interrupt my thinking. There's a good fellow. No. no. I, um, I, 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 I only wanted to remind... What, what, what? Um, we have no surprise witness. We made him up. Yes, sir. It's a remarkable thing. But with no legal training at all, you've put your finger on the one fatal weakness in our defence. 
I was afraid it might be so. It is so. Just give in. We do not give in. Foul? Not when my life depends on this case. Ah. I forgot. <laughs> well, then we, we, we must try. Yes. Yes. Now then, brain, brain, go to work. It'll come to me, Olu. It will come to me in an illuminating flash. That's the way I always go at the crosswords. Yeah. Never give up. Hard, relentless brain work. I have it. Bateson. The lodger? Yes, Bateson the lodger. I never did like him. Uh, under a ruthless cross-examination, you never know, he might confess that it was he. You see the flash. Mm. Mm. And you certainly look much happier. Well, I am. I'm much happier. Much happier. And once I begin my, my ruthless cross-examination... Would you, uh, would you like to try? Fun? You and I are learning to muck in splendidly together over this forward march. <laughs> Mr. Bateson. Yes, sir? Take your hands out of your pockets when you address the court, will you? Mr. Bateson, I understand you were on very friendly terms with the prisoner's wife. Yeah, we had a few good old laughs together, yeah. <laughs> and was the association of an entirely innocent nature? Yeah, innocent laughs. The Christmas cracker variety. Jokes without offence. And to tell those jokes, did you have to sit very close to Mrs. Fowle? How do you mean? Did you sit beneath her? I don't understand. Did she perch upon your knee? What was that? Shocked breathing from the jury. Yeah. Answer my question, Bateson. You're trying to trap me. I'm not trying, Bateson. Succeeding. Well, she may have rested on me knee. Once or twice. And you loved her guiltily. I may have done. And you planned to take her away with you. I did ask her. And when she refused... Uh, just a moment. Uh, where's all this leading to? Your Lordship asks me. My Lord, it is our case that it was this man, Bateson, enraged by the refusal of the prisoner's wife to go away with him, who struck the fatal blow. Now do you see where we've got to? I do. Yes, masterly, I think you'll have to agree. Of course. Yes, yes. No flaws in this one. Uh, no flaws. Uh, no, no flaws, really, no, sir. Uh, perhaps a little hitch. A hitch? Yes, uh... Well, come along, then. If you think there's a hitch, break it down. Well, I, I, I don't really like no, to... No, no, uh, come along, Fowl. Break it down, if you, if you think there is a hitch. Well, let's, let's see what you... Come on. Well, I can't really, not after you've been so kind. Fowl, I... listen to me. All my life, I've stood up against the winds of criticism. I'm quite used to it. Now, come along, speak on. Tell me. Well, dear, as soon as he left my house, Bateson was stopped by a police officer. He'd, um... He'd lifted an alarm clock off me and the remains of a bottle of port. They booked him in straight away. You mean there wasn't time? Hardly. Hmm. Two hours later, the next door neighbor observed Mrs. Fowl at the washing. Then I came home. Fowl. Hmm. Do you want to help me? Well, yes, of course I do. I hope I've shown that. But you will keep on putting all these difficulties in my way. Oh, dear, oh, dear, oh, dear. 
Oh, dear, I... I knew you'd be upset. Well, no, it's not that I'm upset. No, it's just that I, uh, well, crave a little help, you know, a little <laughs> encouragement. Well, you, you win this case, sir. Brilliant mind like yours. Yes, thank God, it is still brilliant, yes. And all that training. Yes. Yes, yes, years of it, years. Hard, hard training. Yes. You'll solve it, sir. Tuppy Morgan. You know what I've heard Tuppy Morgan say? Wilfred, if ever they give you a brief, my dear fellow, always attack the medical evidence. Always attack a doctor. Remember, the jury's full of rheumatism and arthritis and disgusting gastric complaints, and they just love to see a medical man put through it. So go for the doctor. Go for the doctor. Go for the doctor. Go for the doctor. Would you uh, like to try? Well, I, I, I don't know. I don't know. Why, why me? Well, I don't know what a police doctor looks like. Well, they've usually got uh, nicotine fingers, small men, stinking of ether and carbolic. Do you think I, do you think I should try? Oh, I'd enjoy it. <laughs> right. <laughs> Doctor, did you say the lady died of heart failure? No. Now, come along, Doctor. Don't fence with me. Her heart wasn't normal when you examined it, was it? She was dead, so it had stopped. Yes. Then her heart had failed. Well, uh, she had died, indeed, of heart failure. Ah, but... And heart failure might have been brought on by a fit. I say a fit of laughter at a curiously rich joke on the wireless. Mm. Oh, very kind, sir. Very kind, but uh, hollow, hollow. I don't think my attack on the doctor was at all convincing. Well, uh, a bit unlikely, but clever. Clever, clever. Too clever. Too clever. No, no, no. No, we're not going to win this case on science, Far. Science must be thrown out of the window. I mean, as I asked those questions, I could see that I wasn't even convincing you of your own innocence. No, no, no. no. But you do respond to emotion, Far. You do. As I do. You know, the magic of oratory. The wonderful, wonderful power of words. Mm -hmm. Well, now you're talking. <laughs> and I shall talk. Mm -hmm. Oh, if only I could hear some of it. Words as grand as print. Mm. A golden tongue. A voice like a lyre to charm you out of hell. Yes, well, you lost me there for a minute. <laughs> yes. Oh, well, I was just... I was just drawing on the riches of my classical education. Mm -hmm. Comforts me on buses mm. and places of that sort. Yes. But I shall speak to the jury quite simply. Quite simply. I shall say... Yes. Anyway, I won't disappoint you. No, 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 no. No, no, I shall talk for a day. <laughs> Perhaps even two days. <laughs> <laughs> two days. <laughs> and at the end, I shall say, quite simply... Yeah, the, 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 the closing words. Yes, the to, closing words. To, to clinch the argument. The final, final, irrefutable argument. Oh, if only I could hear it. No, you'll hear it, Val. 
They'll hear it. Oh, yes. They'll hear it in court. Huh. Mm. And as I sink back exhausted and wipe the real tears off my glasses, judge is summing up. Members, members of the jury, Struggling with emotion, poor old Tommy. Uh, members of the jury, I can't add anything to the words what the barrister said. Go out and consider your verdict. They won't disagree. Oh, I don't see how they can. Don't you? Yeah. yeah. Members of the jury, have you considered your verdict? We have. Do you find the prisoner guilty or not guilty? Not guilty. Journalists dart off to their little telephones. And what now, eh? Well, they'd make you a judge, but you're probably too busy. <laughs> There's a queue of solicitors on the stairs. My old clerk. My old clerk writes on my next brief. A thousand guineas to divorce a duchess. There's all the questions of new clothes and laying down the port. Oh, Fowl, the wonderful new life you've brought me. Yes, well, I mean, it'll be your greatest day. Yes, it will. <laughs> yes, it will be my greatest day, yes. We've got to take him up. But look here, I haven't finished with him. Can't you see that? Can't help that. He's been called on. I, uh, I, I think, you know, they, they must want us for the, the trial. The trial, yes. Yes, yes. Well, uh, we are not worried about that, are we, eh? <laughs> no, 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 sir. No, not if you say so. <laughs> yes. Uh, yes. All right, then. Uh, this way. Don't come with us, sir, not unless you want to land in the dock. Uh, <laughs> that's stupid of me, I forgot, yes. Well...
be upstanding in court. Herbert Fowle, you are charged that on the third day of June last, you did willfully murder Doris Fowle at the Nest Jubilee Road, Epping, in the county of Essex. Herbert Fowle, do you plead guilty or not guilty? Not guilty. Uh, my lord, uh, members of the jury, this is a most unusual uh, case. And uh, a case that, uh, my lord, I feel... Mr. Wilfred Morgan Hall? Uh, Hall, my lord. Uh, Hall. What's that? Morgan Hall, my lord. Ah, uh, yes, Mr. Morgan Hall. I take it you don't appear to prosecute. Prosecute Mr. Fowl? Heaven forbid, my lord, no. Then we must allow Mr. Perkins to open the case, mustn't we? <laughs> if you could just be a little patient. Yes, of course, my lord. My papers. I'm obliged, your lordship. <clears throat> uh, may it please you, my lord, members of the jury, I appear in this case to prosecute, and my learned friend, Mr. Morgan Hall, as I hope he now understands, is here to defend the prisoner. <laughs> may it please my lord, members of the jury, this is a shocking case. A truly appalling case. In the case of the defendant, Fowl, one is dealing with a particularly brutal type. A man who apparently was quite unable to take a joke. <laughs> Our story begins when the defendant, Fowl, advertises for a humorous type lodger. Case, Mr. Morgan Hall? Uh, no. No. No, what I should have said was, may it please your lordship, members of the jury, I should have said, this poor man Poor innocent man stands accused. I could have got him off. I know I could have got him off. It was simply a question of the right words. The right words to sway the jury. If only I'd said, members of the jury, is there one among you who does not crave for peace? Don't you all long for a quiet life without jokes of any sort? Members of the jury. Gentlemen of the jury, have you never been tempted, those of you with wives of your own? Yes, sir. Hmm? What do you want, sir? Yes, uh, half of my. Here we are, sir. One shilling, please. Members of the jury, the case Trixie, a large brand to decide. Bake off, Here, let me. 
That's right, that one. May I? I beg pardon? Uh, can I? Oh, yes, by all means. Keep it. So does That's it? right, yes, Trixie. Members of the jury, before I was so rudely interrupted, look at the prisoner, members of the jury. Has he hurt you? Has he done you the slightest harm? Is he not the mildest of men? He merely took it upon himself to regulate his domestic affairs. An Englishman's home is his castle. Do any of you feel a primitive urge, members of the jury, to be revenged upon this, this gentle bird fancy? Do you really, do you really want to put an end to this small seed merchant? One who in happier days might have passed unnoticed among you. He is in your hands, members of the jury. Why not let him go now? Let him walk out into the sunshine. A free man. Poor fowl. You'll be taking this very much to heart. Hello, sir. Hello, Fowl. I hadn't expected to find you out. <laughs> well, just uh, temporarily, I was uh, with the governor. Oh, well, did you have some complaint, did you? No, 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 no. To tell the truth, he, uh, he sent for me. Oh. You went in fear and trembling. Well, Fowl, he said, uh, this uh, will surprise you, but um, the Home Office came through on the phone about you this morning, and um, that's a government department, isn't it? Yes, yes, yes. Yes. Well, it appears that they do, uh, in his words, uh, uh, come through from time to time, just on business, of course, uh, on that old blower. Well, he said, uh, quite frankly, he, he admitted that it, it shocked him as much as it shocked me, but uh, the drill is, as he phrased it, um, a reprieve. A reprieve. Yes, it's, uh, it's all over. I'm free. But why should you be free? Seems that the uh, trial was no good at all. No good? But why? Oh, no particular reason. Mr. Fowl, there must be a reason. Nothing happens in law without a reason. Well, you won't care to hear. Tell me why this governor, who knows nothing of the law, should have called our one and only trial together no good. Mr. Fowle, you must answer me. My legal career may depend on it if I'm not to have wasted my life on useless trials. You really want to know? Yes. 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 Well, he said that the... Um, the barrister they chose for me uh, was no good. Uh, an old crock, in his words that he never said a word in my defence, and uh, so my case never got to the jury. He, he said the whole thing was <laughs> ever so null and void, but I'd better be careful in the future.
don't you see it? If I'd had a barrister who'd asked questions and made clever speeches, I, I, I'd be as dead as mutton. Y your artfulness paid off. The artful way you handled it, the, the, the dumb tactics, it, it saved me. I'm alive. So are you. I'm free. To go back to your birds. Hmm. Mr. Morganhall, I think the, uh, the door has been open for some time. I suppose it's unlikely that you'll marry again. Unlikely, yes. I suppose it's not impossible that you might commit some rather more trivial offence. A man cannot live, Mr. Morgan Hall, without committing some trivial offence almost daily. <laughs> yes, oh well, then we may meet again. You may need my services. I may indeed. The future may not be so black. No. The, uh, the sun is shining. Yes, yes. After you, Mr. Morgan Hall, please. Oh, no, no, no. But a man of your education should go first. No, you lead the way, Mr. Fowle. Very well. Yes, lead the way. And as your legal advisor, I will follow at a discreet distance in order to iron out such little tangles as you may hope to leave in your wake. Yes.